Ladies and gentlemen, that is a work of art. I look at you like you are invincible. Time to get you a pot. Sometimes heat it up. It seems like I'm invisible. So we're gonna go ahead and lower this to around a low, medium low heat and just let that get heated up. Now over at our prepping area, we get to chopping. So what we have here is two yellow onions and four cloves of garlic. And we ain't gonna mess around. Choo! Chewy boy, I better clean this up before my wife gets home. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back over to our hot pot. We're gonna add a small amount of oil here. And then we're gonna take a little paper towel and kind of coat that oil around. It's gonna do that when you add the paper towel, but we don't need all this oil. We just kind of want to coat the bottom because the fats from our meat are gonna give us plenty, but we don't want the meat to immediately burn when we drop it in. There we go. Next, we drop in two pounds of ground beef. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and start flipping this. It'll brown quick, you know, depending on the heat of your pot. So, kind of flip it over, get it moved around. If I can do that. <laughs> Hang tight. There we go. Now we're cooking. We're just going to brown this up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have browned up the ground beef here. So now we're going to go ahead and remove it from our pot with a slotted spoon into a little strainer off on the side with some paper tape, ah, paper towels <laughs> underneath it. And yeah, we'll go ahead and throw that in there and allow the you know, remaining fats to kind of drip down onto the paper towels and we'll discard that appropriately. But just keep on doing this. Okay, we've removed our ground beef. Now we drop in the onion and garlic. Oh yeah. And scoop that in. Get stirring. We're gonna break up all this browning on the bottom here. You know, kind of get it deglazed with the onion and all. Okay, so look, I know I've told you guys in the past, if it seems like things are really sticking to the bottom here, you can't get them up with the onion, you can add a small amount of cold water, and then that there will start to kind of sizzle up, and you can break things up. Look at that. Boom. Break it up, and then just rub your onions back in there. There you go. And just repeat the process if necessary. The water will evaporate, as you can see. All that water is evaporating. It's just helping you break things up. So just to let you guys know, we saute in these onions for quite a while. We do not want any crunchy onions up in our burritos. I mean, you may. You may want crunchy onions. It's up to you. Me personally, I like that soft bite of a burrito. It just goes down so smooth. So we will cook these for probably about 30 minutes or until they're very soft. We have browned up nicely here, ladies and gentlemen. Good soft onions. Got some browning again on the bottom of the pot. At this time, we will add one 10 ounce can of Rotel. We're gonna use the juices of these tomatoes right here to get up the remaining remnants on the bottom of this pot. And we're just gonna blend that in. All right, next, we will add back in our ground beef. Boom. There we go. I'll scoop that. Mix that in. Okay, next we will add in a 15 ounce can of ranch style beans. Ugh. I may have to scoop some of this out. We'll get it. Blend that in. Now look, you may not want to add beans to your burrito. That's clearly up to you. But you may need some kind of substance in there, maybe a little water or something, just to kind of help let things simmer down when you cover this pot up so that it doesn't burn to the bottom. But you know, you'll figure it out. Next, we will add one tablespoon of chili powder. 
one teaspoon of garlic powder, a one ounce package of your favorite taco seasoning, a one ounce package of your favorite ranch dressing seasoning, or, you know, dry ranch dressing, whatever they call it, envelope, you know. All right, let's blend this together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and cover this up. And we're gonna let this simmer on a low heat for one hour. And we're gonna come back every few minutes or so and just kind of stir the bottom, make sure nothing's sticking. And we just keep repeating that process. All right, guys, we're getting close to our one hour mark. So at this time, go ahead and preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Our one hour mark is up. That is cooked down beautifully. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and turn our heat completely off. We're just gonna give this one final stir here. We've been stirring it every five minutes or so because there's some stickage to the bottom, and you'll notice that whenever you're cooking this, that you just kinda, kinda gotta break it up a little bit every five minutes, but as you can see right now, it's just, it's a very soft, beautiful filling for our burritos. So, we're about to get wrapping all right ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna show you what I like to do here first I like to take a little dollop of uh, sour cream and kind of put it down on the side right here uh, you may have to use your hands uh, obviously I washed mine first trust me and I'm just gonna spread it along the end over here okay now look you may be like I hate sour cream and that's fine hate it all you want but I guarantee you will not taste it when you put this much like this all I'm doing is using this little bit as a binding agent. So that way when I wrap it all up, it'll stay in place. And then, you know, what I did here, I kind of mapped out, you know, eight slices of uh, stuffing in there or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so that way it's kind of the same amount. You know, so you could always use a little scale or whatever you want to kind of even it out to eight portions. But ultimately this will work. All right, and I put it like that right there. And so you don't want to go all the way to the ends because you uh, will be folding it in. But about right there is where I put it. And then from here, we will bring this over right here. Bring that over right there. Kind of tuck this in with our fingers here. And then wrap it on in. And there you go. We got a burrito. Uh, probably not the prettiest thing you've ever seen in your life, but you know what? It gets the job done. And then we put it in our, our dish here uh, to where it fits. Might have to kind of smash it down. If you've got a wider dish, it'll work. Um, I'll probably make them a little shorter on the next couple of them, so that way they, they fit good. But we're going to put four and four. And, and beforehand, I did spray some non-stick cooking spray in this, these two dishes right here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the rest of them up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are wrapped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I like to do next. Now, these next few steps here can really be based on your preference, but what I like to do is, I get a eight to 10 ounce container of some uh, enchilada sauce. Uh, now, I know some of you are gonna say, oh, well now it's an enchilada. Look, to be quite honest, I think an enchilada is made with a corn tortilla and these are flour, so no matter what I throw on top, it's still a burrito, okay? for all you uh, people out there that wanna go ahead and argue about it. But either way, call it what you want. But I take the enchilada sauce and I just kinda of spoonful some over the top of each burrito. All right, and then from there, I'll kinda of like spread it out, you know, maybe smooth it out a little bit so that it kinda of hits all of the burrito that it can, really. You know, as much of it as I want to get on there and I got a little bit left in here so if I see any little spots I think I need to add just go ahead and add it on there and there we go looks beautiful okay and from here I've shredded up some Havarti jalapeno cheese and this I go ahead and just sprinkle along the top now the cheese you put is completely up to you. How much you cheese 
is completely up to you. How much you put, how much cheese you put, I should say. Hey, how much you cheese? That sounds pretty cool, actually. You know, cheese. <laughs> All right. So anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of sprinkle it along the top here. And uh, like I said, you can use whatever cheese you like. If you got a, a queso that you know you can buy that you can shred up, you might want to do that. You know, I like queso. I just, I don't typically find it uh, in a block or anything like that. It's usually already melted or in some type of container. But, you know, we could go ahead and put as much as we see fit here. And then we will pop these bad boys in the oven. There we go. Let's get crack a lacking. There we go. We're going to let these cook for 30 minutes. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen. That is a work of art. All right, so you're gonna wanna let these bad boys cool for about 10 minutes before you serve. So that's just what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plate up. I'm dreaming of an Escalade, taking you on an escapade worldwide from Paris to Rome. Then we turn around and scoop back home. Hold up just a little while. Till we're gone again. You better call your pops and oops, grab it. Take a look at that, shall we? Woohoo! Man, that looks delicious. Smells real good, too. Now, this is how I throw it down a little lettuce, tomato, sour cream. Hey, to each their own. You want some jalapenos? Add you some jalapenos, onions what have you. Now look too, if you're tasting this filling and you feel like it needs a little salt or even some Cajun seasoning, feel free to add some there too. I feel like it has that good Mexican night kind of flavor to it, so that's what I roll with. Uh, furthermore, let me just dabble into what I'm wearing. This is actually the original shirt, uh, not the original hat, but another one similar to what I wore the very first time I showed myself on a cooking video. Now, I know I catch a lot of flag because it's Raging Cajuns, LSU, but I love both teams. And uh, that's some my ingredients to my recipe. Now, when they play each other, that's my secret ingredient. <laughs> ah, look, I love both programs. They had a great year, very successful year. Uh, Cajuns 11-3, and 2019, and uh, LSU undefeated. So, hey, can't ask for more than that. All right, I don't want to bore y'all to death. Let's take a bite. Ooh, I'm starving too. And I'm sure it's still hot because uh, I didn't let it cool out very long. I said, let me get right in. So, a little lettuce, tomato, sour cream. Take a bite. Mm. I love this so much. The burrito tastes so fresh. See, it's not like buying you a little burrito out the freezer, frozen section. Mm, excuse me and then throw it in the oven. Uh, doing it that way, typically, you're gonna have a very hard, crunchy burrito. Um, these are fresh out the package, and uh, they're getting you know thrown in there for the first time, so it's really, really fresh, real soft. The filling tastes great. Has a little bit of a kick to it, um, and that enchilada sauce on there just kinda gives it a little tang, man. Just gives it, mmm, a little something. Mmm, man. Mexican night at home. Bon appetit. Mm. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we knocked out another dish. Some homemade burritos. Tweak it to your liking, have fun with it, hopefully you enjoy it. Other than that, I got nothing else for you. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you soon.